most Africans today are now adherents of either Islam or Christianity. However, long before the Europeans and Arabs stormed the shores of Africa to colonize the region, many African gods and goddesses ruled the area, as well as mythical deities dictated the religious realities of the people on the continent. In that era, traditional practices like worshipping different local African gods and deities formed the core tenets of religion among the various ethnic groups scattered across the region. Welcome to RNI TV with me your host Espila Caleb and this is the Did You Know segment where we are going to tell you about the 10 African gods and goddesses of the mythical era and the mythical deities. Number one is Nana Buluku Nana. Nana Buluku Nana is a highly venerated goddess who is considered to be the female supreme among the uh, some West African cultures. She is particularly worshipped in the traditional region of the Fon people in Dahomey, now Benin Republic, and the Iwe people of the Togo. The goddess who is also known as Nana Buluku, Nana Buku or Nana Boklu is widely regarded as to be the one of the most influential deities in West African theology and is held in high esteem among many cultures. As a matter of fact, Nana Buluku is recognized and worshipped by different ethnic groups other than just the Fon and the Iwe people. She is also worshipped by the Yoruba people in Nigeria who call her Nana Buku. The Igbo people in Nigeria who also revere and worship her call her Oli Sabulua. Some people actively worship Nanabuluku, however, others don't worship her directly but worship the gods that originated from her. Nanabuluku originated among the ancient Dahomey people. On to number two, we have Taka. Taka is a demigod who is severely and highly revered in the Serer region, which is particularly known by the people of Serer ethnic group, a West African ethno-religious group found in Senegal, Gambia and Mauritania today. The Serer people diligently worship Takar, who is also known as Ta'akar. In the Serer region, Takar is viewed as the god of justice and vengeance, and his worshippers worship him so as to appeal him to prevent oppression, evil magic or injuries that may be inflicted by other people on them. Usually the god is worshipped by his faithful at the foot of the trees deemed to be sacred. He is also worshipped in the new moon. Takar as the god of justice is regarded to be the perpetual patron of all those who work within the judiciary. Then we have number three Anubis. Anubis is an ancient, is an ancient Egyptian god who was one of the most revered deities in the ancient G Egyptian religion. Also known as Inpu or Anpu, the god Anubis is revered as the god of death, the afterlife, mummification, cemeteries, embalming, tombs, and the underworld. The god is usually depicted as a canine or a man with a canine head in the ancient Egyptian religion. Because of this, the god Anubis is sometimes revered to as having a jackal head or a wolf head. The wolf head is now what it is now more preferably or properly referred to have. Anubis is known to have assumed different roles in the ancient times, as early as the first dynasty of the Egyptian kings, which is between 3100 BC and 2890. The god was depicted to be the protector of graves. Later he was depicted as an, also an embalmer who tended to the dead. He was also known as the lord of the underworld. Anubis is one of the most frequently depicted and mentioned gods in the Egyptian pantheon. Then we have number four, Adroa. Adroa is a highly revered deity. Adroa is the supreme god of the Lugbara people, a central Sudanic ethnic group who now majorly live in the West Nile region of Uganda, which is in adjoining area of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Lugbara region or religion, Adora is a creator god. The creator aspect of him was known as Adroa Ba or Bapapiri, who is the god or creator of men. According to the Lagbara people, Adroa is one who created the first man on earth 
whose name is Gboro Gboro. He also created the first living woman called Mimi. The Lubara religion explains that Boroboro and the Mimi were also twins who went on to become the ancestors of the Lukbara people. On to number five, we have Njame or Njambe. Njame is a highly revered god among the Buloki people, also known as the Loki people. In traditional religion of the Loki or the Buloki people, Njame is the supreme creator, god figure who controls everything. Take note that the Buloki people are an ethnic group that is primarily based in the Democratic Republic of Congo today. Jame is prominent in Boloki myths regarding to the origin of death. This, according to anthropologist John H. Wicks, is because Njame is also used to refer to a deity associated with sickness and death. Then we have Ni Ailik. Ni Ailik. Ni Ailik is a supreme creator god of the Dinka people, a Nilotic ethnic group native to the Sudan. According to the Dinka mythology, Ni Ailik as the supreme god lives in the skies and is regarded to be a male, although he is known to have physical manifestations. According to some accounts, the god is also referred to as Deng Dit. As per the Dinka mythology, the Dinka people believed that their god, Ni Ailik, was the one who created the first man called Garang and the first woman called Abuka. <laughs> Ni Ailik created them from clay and at first both Garang and Abuk were very little in size as they were just miniaturized form of present day humans. Then we have Mebege. Mebege is most revered god among the Fang people of the Central African Republic. In fact, he is regarded as the supreme creator god who made all things in the beginning of time. According to Fang mythology, Mebege was originally alone in the whole universe with only a spider called Dibobia to accompany him. They were alone for a long time, however, after some time, Dibobia suggested to Mebege that he should create the earth and other things to join them. Upon this suggestion, Mebege decided to create other deities. Mebege took out several strands of his hair, removed part of his brain and a smooth stone. He then turned them into an egg and gave it to Dibobia. Dibobia took the egg and put it inside the sea, leaving it there for some time. After a while, the egg inside the sea cracked open and three deities emerged from it. The deities included the firstborn called Zame Yemabege, the secondborn being Ningwan Mabege, who was a female, and the youngest one being Nlona Mebege, who is a male. Zame Mebege became the leader of other deities and is associated with masculine energy and the sun, while Ningwan Mebege, his sister, was associated with fertility, feminine energy, and the moon. On his own part, the youngest deity, Nlona Mebege, was associated with evil. According to Fang mythology, after Mebege had created the deities, he became the leader, Zame Yema Bege. All the instructions were given to him and he needed them to create the earth as soon as Zame was succeeded in the matters of creation. Number 8, we have Amdioha. Amdioha or Amadioha is one of the most popular and powerful deities among the Igbo people of the southeastern Nigeria. He is also one of the most popular African gods today and is noteworthy that in some parts of Igbo land, the god is also referred to as Amadiora Kamanu Kamalu. Amadiora is a feared god of thunder and lightning and the Igbo people fear him so much for he is a symbol of a white ram and his color is red. Then we have Mami Wata. Mami Wata is a weighty, Mami Wata is a water deity or spirit that is highly venerated in the West African society as well as parts of the East and Central African. Also known as Mami Wata, Mami Wata spirits are also most frequently depicted as females. However, they are also sometimes depicted as males. Some scholars have claimed that Mami Wata is actually a Pidgin English derivation of Mother Water, 
meaning that the goddess title of the mother of water or the grandmother of water. Often the goddess mummy water is depicted to have the figure of a mermaid that is a woman upper body and hind quarters of a fish or serpent. The, the spirit is also said to love passing as a complete human being sometimes and then wander through busy markets or patronizing bars or to mingle with unsuspecting humans. At other times she can also manifest herself self as a number of other forms including that of a man. The last one is Ngai. Ngai is one of the highest or the highly revered African gods. Ngai is the supreme god of the Kamba and Kikuyu ethnic groups of Kenya, regarded as the omnipotent god. Ngai, who is also known as Engai, Enkai, Muayi, Muayi, is also known in the spirituality of the Kamba and Kikuyu people as the creator god of the universe and all of the things that are in it. According to the Kamba and the Kikuyu people, Ngai created the very first human beings. The first man that he created was called Gikuyu and the first woman is called Mumbi. The Kikuyu ethnic group often worshipped the god with their faces set on Mount Kirinyaga, also known as Mount Kenya. Also, goats are sacrificed as rituals and prayers offered under the sacred Mugumo tree or a fig tree species. Sacrifices are usually performed on occasions when people are faced with highly serious problems like epidemics and droughts. They are also performed during planting and harvesting and also during birth and marriage and even death. The worship of Ngai is still very much in practice today among the Kamba and Kikuyu ethnic groups of Kenya. That is it for today folks, remember to like, subscribe and share and always remember to leave the comment below of what video you like us to do next. Thank you for the various views and subscriptions. Until next time, see you. My name is Espila Kalp.